Let's talk about five lessons I learned from the masters. Today on my Twitter page, I put up a, a list of what I learned from some great coaches that were there. Um, and a couple of you know things I learned about coaches is that some of the best coaches in the world, they're the quietest. They're observational. They're listening. They're learning. The ones that are there and they're uh, you know trying to hold court and teach uh, other coaches, they're not always the best. What were five lessons I learned about the masters? Um, every time I'm in those situations, I try to learn, right? I'm trying to gain uh, an understanding. I'm trying to gain value of what I'm doing. I'm trying to understand that um, my game is, as a coach, as a player, trying to be in the right frame of mind. I learned first and foremost as a coach that it's not always a play you do, it's just not a play you do. I'm trying to be there for the players, I'm going to try to always give us um, five major things about the Masters. Number one is not about the execution, but the determination. Athletes and players are in that situation and they are executing. Okay. But everybody's trying to execute. It's the determination to deal when the execution isn't perfect. It's that determination to stay in the hunt. It's that it's, uh, execution of when you've made a mistake and you're continuing to push. The majors are the ultimate pressure test in golf. So as a result, decision-making and all the other things are really difficult, okay? So it's about the determination and staying in it. People don't win it on Monday. They don't win it on Tuesday. They don't even win it on Thursday. They have to stay in it long enough and be determined to what they're trying to do without taking it personally. Number two, what I learned at Augusta um, is success is built on preparation. That is true. All the work you put in. But becoming a player is not about the preparation. It's about the moment. You have all that preparation. Those are tools. And I find sometimes players get stuck in that preparation model. I've done this. I've done that. I should be ready versus I'm here to compete. Now let's go compete. Like I've got the tools in the tank. Let's go get this done. Let's go find a way to compete with what I got. I don't have to have my A plus game. I can compete with my B game. Can you, I mean, think about it. I'm sure John didn't prepare for a four putt but he faced the challenge and hit the next shot. Right? That's what's critical. That success is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, don't hit a shot unless you've practiced it. Exactly. Success success too often times, people are looking for immediate validation. And a lot of times the success of what we're doing is a long-term process. You know, we always talk about the master's bash of being the back nine on Sunday. And yet there's so much anxiety going into Wednesdays and Thursdays, right? Isn't that funny? right? You've got to prepare for what you're doing. You have to live in the moment of what you are, but understand that everything is building towards something. It's not perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. It can't be perfect. It just needs to be process oriented. So do you think that uh, players, do you think they over prepare or over absolutely too much thought into it? To absolutely. The, all the masters, but like the majors in general, all the majors, I think players over prepare. I think, and I'll say this, and I've told this to my players, um, is that players at bigger events feel like they need to do more. And I, I tell the story about when we went to the College World Series my freshman year. I was a redshirt freshman, redshirting freshman. And Coach Bertman stood in front of us and said, guys, the biggest mistake that players and teams make is when they get here is that they they try to do too much. They try to practice more. They try to work on more things. They take too many pictures. They try to go to too many different things. We're going to simplify everything we do. We're going to go back to the first practices that we had in the fall. We're going to do those. We have a game plan. We're going to stay focused, and we're not going to try to do more. If we haven't done it yet, let's not try it now. And I think that's critical. And I think what happens at majors is players come in, and they don't have to do a pro-am on Wednesday, so they practice, do nine holes on Monday, nine holes on Tuesday, nine holes on Wednesday, practicing more because there's a fear of leaving and not feeling prepared. So as a result, they see the successes sprints versus the marathon, which is hold on to your process, hold on to your energy and stay in it for the long haul. I would tell players to come like it was interesting. And, and John hasn't said this, um, but he had called me on Saturday before the, before I left on Sunday and I talked to two legends, Jack Nicholas and Tom Watson. They said to come up the week before Monday, on Thursday of the week before and play then go home and come back on Monday. He didn't get out there till Monday. You know, he wasn't there on Sunday. He wasn't there on Saturday. And because 
there's me and one of the coaches, Mark Blackburn, who's a dear friend of mine who we'll have on the show at some point. We stayed together. And when I left yesterday, he was like, dude, do you feel like you've been here for 10 days? I'm like, I feel like I've been here for three weeks. Right. Now, as coaches, you're there. I think the average time I got to the golf course every day was 610. The average time I left the golf course every day was 715. Um, and, and so you're 13 hour days, right? Well, the players are doing the same thing. They're doing a lot more. Their families are there. So I would do less. Um, I, I have a little theory that players on regular tour days and regular events should go play golf courses somewhere else. Um, I don't think that we can look at people as success and say they, you know, if they struggle that they underprepared or overprepared, I think they need to develop a plan that they follow week in to week out and not make the majors worth more. They already are worth more, but let's not do it. Um, so I think that's a big one. I think people need to stay. I think you learn it. The people who could stay in it until the best shows up. Um, so he, the gala was a perfect example. Stuck around, stuck around, stuck around, and then struck. And got a heck of a finish, right? Um, you take a look at like somebody like um, Sam Bennett, the uh, amateur. Obviously super talented. Um, hung around, hung around. But that was a long endurance model for somebody who's never been in that situation. Um, so I want the best to stay in it as long as they can and grind, find their B game, sign, find their C game and make it work. And then the last thing I think that's critical about this, we can all use is, can you make a decision or do you doubt your decisions? We always talk about how pressure impacts us physically, mentally, in our decision-making and our grittiness. To me, that third factor is the most critical that the masters are a major People make too much complication over their decision making. They're, if you look at them, they're overthinking. They're trying to guess the win too much. And yes, it can be punishing, but I think it may be a week looking at it that we need to start devaluing decisions and be get more instinctual than trying to overthink it. So, those are my five lessons. What do you think about those, Bash? Oh, I like it. The preparation. That's always the question I had. It's just. I think it's human nature. But we see that. I mean, what's what's the number one question that we get in our Instagrams? Why can't I take my practice game to my competition? Yeah. Because we've been grinding for so long trying to do it right. That's just my opinion. So, something to think about. Got some good questions. We come back, we're going to go over what it takes to be a closer, and we're going to dive into your questions and answers right after this. 